Hello, welcome back to the OTB channel. Um, you nearly didn't get a video this week. Uh, I'm afraid uh, I've caught the dreaded lurgy. Um, my wife calls it man flu. And uh, I'm snuffling and coughing with a chest infection and trying to feed myself hot lemon to uh, get through it. <laughs> but I thought, I can't let you down. I need to produce a, a video today, albeit quite a quick one. And... Um, then I shall retire to bed with uh, a hot toddy and hopefully kill it off. Um, so we're going to look at the deeping distribution and the deeping desktop environment today. Um, before I start, uh, I, I think it's worth saying that um, there's been a few things happen this week. Um, the first thing is I've swapped out the webcam. And I've got myself a Sony Alpha 5100. Now, <laughs> because I've got this uh, man flu, uh, I haven't even had time to play with it. And I've just set it up this morning, and I'm still a bit flummoxed uh, with things like uh, shutter speed, apertures, exposures, ISOs. Uh, so it's pretty much running in... Uh, automatic mode at the moment but i will have a play with it later but to my eyes it does seem to look a lot better than the webcam and uh, hopefully as i get to grips with it it will start to improve the video um i use the word flummox there uh, for a reason i had a comment on one of my videos from uh, uh, someone one of my watchers uh, who said um, what's the difference between a pound and a quid i must have referred to it somewhere uh, and I do apologise if I occasionally slip into uh, UK slang. Uh, so flummoxed, as in I'm flummoxed at this new camera, means I'm a bit confused about it at the moment. A quid is the same as a pound. A couple of quid, three quid, five quid. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure I use the occasional uh, UK slang word without thinking about it. But by all means, if I say something you don't understand... Mention it in the comments and uh, I'll clarify it and I'll try and avoid doing that in the future. So let's move on to Deepin. Let me have another quick glug. It's one of those uh, distributions. It's been around for a little while now. It's been on my wish list for having a look at um, and I haven't managed to get round to it, but it's... Uh, it's sailing quite high in the distro uh, watch charts. I know that doesn't mean a great deal, but... <clears throat> excuse me. The thing about it, and the thing that appeals to me, is it's a custom-made desktop environment. It isn't borrowing off anything else. And I'm always quite impressed when um, a team of developers actually try and build something from scratch. It was one of the things that I liked about Budgie. And I have had a play with Budgie since, and I think it's a great desktop environment. Something like Budgie may eventually drag me away from uh, Marte. Uh, and I wondered, I wonder if Deepin could be the same. Well, let's just have a quick look. If we go to this split screen uh, approach, you can see the Deepin website there. Initially, when you go to it, it's all in Chinese. Uh, it is a Chinese distribution, and it is built for China. But uh, the translators in our various uh, web browsers seem to do the trick. And on the Deepin website, you can set this to English, which is great. <coughs> Excuse me again. So Deepin, Deepin 1511 is the version that I've downloaded. I simply went to the Deepin page and I clicked on new release and it came up with a number of different uh, download sources. I just went to SourceForge and I have to say I found the download to be pretty quick. However, I did read that uh, apart from if you download the official release, you won't get a live system you will just get an installation ISO. And from what I've been reading, if you download the official release, it can take an awful long time to download. So I just went for something quick. 
and it downloaded in a couple of minutes, so no real problem. If we look at uh, Wikipedia, um, it gives us a little overview of uh, Deepin, and obviously Wikipedia, whatever it says, is always true. <laughs> so no, seriously, take it all with a pinch of salt. But uh, formerly known as Highweed Linux, and then uh, Linux Deepin, and now just Deepin. It's been based on uh, a number of distributions, uh, and it features the DDE, the Deepin Desktop Environment. It's built on Qt, and it uses the DDE KWin Window Manager, a set of patches for Plasma's Window Manager. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't mean a lot to me at the moment. But apparently in 2019, how I can't even say this, Huawei started to ship Linux laptops pre-installed with Deepin. Now, mentioning Huawei uh, brings up a whole range of issues. I mean, uh, in terms of the uh, conversation and the debate that was going on about Huawei and whether or not their software spied <laughs> on uh, their users, um, there's no evidence that I can find that suggests Deepin does the same thing, uh, but I see it mentioned across the internet that it could be. But if you're a conspiracy theorist, anything could be. Um, looking at Wikipedia, it mentions that the Deepin developers um, don't just rely on uh, the applications that are already out there. They've created a whole range of custom applications, as you can see here that are made just for Deepin. And apparently the first release of HiWix.1 was actually in 2004 on IceWM. And it's morphed. It's morphed for a long way, actually. Uh, Highweed Linux used XFCE and Debian. Then it moved over to LXDE. Then when it become, became Linux Deepin in 2009, it was using GNOME 2 and then GNOME 3. And for quite a while, it was based on Ubuntu. Um, then back in 2015, it moved to the Debian Unstable branch. I'm assuming they mean SID and not the testing branch. And as of... Deepin 15.10, it moved to the stable branch from unstable. So there's been quite a few changes. I'm pleased to see it move to a stable branch because I get the feeling it's very much targeted um, at new users, although it shouldn't put power users off either. Uh, but a stable distribution is something that uh, is obviously a bonus. Unfortunately, um, when it was released, it was uh, based on Debian 9, which was the previous stable release. 15.11, according to this, is still based on Debian 9. So you will find some older packages in there if you install the standard Debian packages. But according to this, Deepin 20 is due to be released. I'm assuming that means January 20 next year and that will be based on Buster. Okay, so we have an application with a custom desktop environment based on the previous release of Debian Stable. Well, let's have a quick look. This isn't going to be a long review. Uh, I'm gonna briefly show it uh, being installed. We'll have a look at the desktop environment, then we'll come back and have a chat. Okay, so we're booting up the uh, Deepin installation uh, ISO now. Uh, I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse me. This is in uh, stretched or scale mode because the uh, guest editions clearly aren't included at this stage. But we get the options to install, to launch into a fail-safe mode, or to check the ISO. 
So no live mode here, but let's just hit install and see what happens. Right, well not a lot at the moment, we're waiting for something to happen, but I'm sure that's going to uh, kick off in a minute. And uh, here we are. We get to click what language that we want, and I can only actually, oh no, there we go, there's a whole range of languages there that are available so I'll click on English but the next button does not work until I confirm I've read and agreed to the uh, end user license that sort of sends shivers up my spine but I'm not going to read it now I'm just going to click and hit next it gives me a friendly reminder it's spotted I'm using a virtual machine and warns that performance may be not what it could be on real hardware. Fair enough. Continue. I now need to enter my username. So let's go for the usual. If I can type properly. And click next. I select my time zone. And I'm asked to select an installation location. Well, there is only uh, a virtual hard drive on this system. Uh, it's 32 gig. So I'll just select that and hit start the installation. I get a warning now that I should make a backup of any important data. And it's going to format the partition as EXT4. Okay. That's great, let's just continue. And we now get to read and watch uh, the Deep In slideshow. Apparently we can experience the incredible pleasure of Deep In after the time for just a cup of coffee. Deep In movies, shock and ceaseless audio visual enjoyment. Okay. The deep in image viewer, savour the great moments. The photos freeze precious people and things in the memory. <laughs> okay, so the English is a little strange, um, but you have to remember that this is a Chinese distro. And uh, if you were attempting to create an English distro with a Chinese language option, I'm sure Chinese people would find our uh, translation just as strange, so we can forgive them for that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to carry on watching this uh, slideshow. Um, I'm going to pause this, because I don't want to put you through it, and we'll come back once the system is installed, once I've installed the guest editions, and we're fully up and running. And we're back. So you should see on your screen now um, all the beauty of deep in desktop in full HD, uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, in, installed flawlessly. I did have to install the guest editions uh, from VirtualBox, but that was straightforward enough. And once done, well, this is what we're presented with. Or rather, not quite. I've had a little bit of a fiddle. So let me just... Uh, Put it back to the mode it comes in which is called fashion mode okay so this wasn't actually uh, the default wallpaper it was a wallpaper that when i first booted it I, I thought i'd stick with but if you want to change the wallpaper on the deep in desktop you sim simply hit the right right click and you get the full selection here and it's certainly got some nice options from, I don't know, a sort of abstract cube to uh, an icy landscape to uh, an aerial view. You get the idea. And for each option, I quite like the fact that the uh, wallpapers appear along the bottom. It's quite Android-esque, is that a word? And you get the uh, option to set it only for the desktop or on the lock screen uh, as well. Well, I'm going to set the uh, the wallpaper with the little bird on just for the desktop because I think that looks absolutely stunning. I really do. Um, 
So first impressions, well, it's a good looking desktop. I'll give it that. It's got very clean lines. I quite like the dock down here, I must admit, but uh, I'm a fan of Plank, so uh, all good. Um, we have a menu on the left, and as soon as I hit there, ah, I don't like that. It looks very gnome-like to me with uh, what I would call a tebby, Teletubbies interface. Big, massive images of icons that we can presumably scroll through. Right, okay. Uh, let's just stop that for a minute. There is a way to change that, uh, thankfully. Um, but let's, let's look at this dock. If you don't like a central dock, you can right-click on the dock, go to Mode... And at the moment, it's in what's called fashion mode, but you can change it to something called efficient mode, which essentially just puts the dock uh, down on the bottom. Um, as a standard, uh, a standard menu bar, really. We still get this, but if, when I click the menu, I go up to the top right, you'll see a little icon there that allows me to compress what I'm seeing. And if I click on that, thank God for that, it turns into a normal menu. Um, right, I'm glad we've got that option. We can expand it again if we want, or we can contract it. I certainly wouldn't uh, use the GNOME-style menu. Um, I know it has fans out there. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. And it's nothing really to do with its usability. It's just the aesthetics. I just, it turns me cold. Um, a standard menu, I'm good with that. And you basically can use this like any other menu. You can have a look at uh, what internet packages are installed. And it comes with Google Chrome and Thunderbird. Okay, so that's a good selection. Music. It comes with uh, a music application and a voice recorder. Deepin actually creates a lot of its own apps, so they won't necessarily be Debian apps. They could well be uh, apps that have been developed for this desktop. If we go back and go on to video, uh, it's an application called Movie and also Screen Recorder. Nice to see a screen recorder installed from uh, default click or drag to select the area to record okay start recording that's pretty nice i don't quite know how to stop that now hold on click the tray icon ah it's there okay recording finished fine um right it's not an app that i remember but uh or have seen before but um Always impressed to see when a distro uh, developer actually goes all out to uh, do something a little bit different. Uh, what about graphics? Screenshot and image viewer? Office? Right, well this is going to... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. This is going to put a few people off. The fact that it's got WPS um, installed as opposed to LibreOffice. I believe its compatibility is um, with Microsoft Word is pretty good. Hmm, okay. Do I confirm or not? Have I read the uh, Office Software License Agreement? Well, I would, but you can see the problem, so let me just hit confirm. <coughs> and uh, new document. And there we go. Thank goodness the Chinese text doesn't carry over to the uh, to the actual menu itself. Let's have a look back at the menu. Reading, so it's got a document viewer there, presumably a PDF viewer. System. <coughs> I've got this terrible chest infection. You're going to have to bear with me, guys. Right, a whole range of different system apps there. Can we drag down? 
I would hope so. Yeah, there we go. Okay, plenty in there. And another category. User feedback. So what's that? To better solve system problems, log files will be collected for debugging, but user-sensitive information will not be involved. I think I'm just going to cancel that. Okay. Oh, my goodness. What's this? Is this the MP4 that I've created? Let's have a look. Open deep in movie. Right, so that was obviously what the screen recorder recorded. Well, let's just move that to trash. Delete. Okay, so it has a reasonable uh, selection of software already included in it. If you want to add more software, there are various ways that you can do that. The first way is through Deepin's App Store. I'm not really a fan of app stores generally, uh, but this seems to be fairly straightforward. So looking there, we've got rankings. I can install VLC, and I can install LibreOffice if I don't like WPS. Opera, Play on Linux, Synaptic uh, Package Manager, which I should say I've already installed, uh, BitTorrent Clients, Team Viewer, etc etc and you can pretty much work your way through the categories so if we start by internet yeah we've got a fair amount games graphics so all the, the standard uh, applications that you would expect what I don't know is whether these are flat packs or whether they're um, applications that the Deepin developers have taken and recompiled from the Debian source or whether they're just out of the Debian repository exactly as was. I thought I'd have a look um, at uh, Synaptic to get a better view. So I installed the Synaptic pack Package Manager, which is what I'd probably use if I was using Deepin. And I thought I'd have a look at what repository is actually uh, installed here. And interestingly enough, it isn't uh, the Debian repository. It's packages.deepin.com. Um, the distribution is Lion. So... Whether that's a direct mirror of the Debian repository or whether it's a right mixture, and I would presume it's a right mixture of things, uh, which contains Debian packages and packages developed uh, by the Deepin developers. But only one repo. I would tend to use Synaptic, though, for installation. And the fact that I can install it is brilliant. Okay, so what else have we got? I quite like the menu, now that we've got it like that. I can go straight to settings. And settings opens up this little bar on the right. One of the most talked about features is Cloud Sync, which is, I think, a little bit like um, Android Backup or uh, iPhone Backup, where your applications and settings are saved in the cloud. I believe at the moment this is only available in mainland China. Yeah, you can see that. So unfortunately, it's not something we can use at the moment. But I believe there are moves afoot to make that global. Whether it's something I'd use, I'm not entirely sure, but it's good to have the option. When I click on any of the menu items here, it goes into this uh, more detailed dialogue where I can click down the side here on these icons to set various things. So it starts with my account. 
moves on to uh, cloud sync then the display then personalization the network sound etc etc so that works quite well I think um, this looks quite like Budgie, it's Raven menu. Um, all good. Um, I think I could get used to it. I don't know whether or not it would be annoying. I would quite like the option to just have um, a control center or a control panel that I could open up rather than relying on this. But nevertheless, it does the job. One of the things that I wasn't sure how to do when I first installed this was how to update the system. And I actually looked all throughout the uh, the store, the app store, and I couldn't see um, an option for doing an update. However, when I looked through the settings panel, I found that there was an update for an update. And if I just click the update there, it checks for updates, which you can see it's doing now. And apparently it's up to date, which it will be because I've already done it. However, you can still use the terminal. So you can do a sudo apt update. Well, there's only one repo for it to go to, so that's quite quick. And then sudo apt upgrade. You can also, of course, install packages using the command line. What, apart from Synaptic, the other package that I've installed is HTOP. So let's see how that shows us. Well, that's not bad, actually. Um, given that we are on a virtual machine... It's currently using 628 megs of memory, um, which is, is, is reasonable in this day and age. It really is. Um, so quite impressed with that. I quite like the look of this terminal as well. It does have transparency enabled. You can actually play around with the effects. Uh, let's go back to the look and feel. It's probably in personalization. Duh, 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 duh. Where are we? Resolution, as you can see, is 1920 by 1080. Personalization. We can have window effects or we can turn the effects off. We can also choose a number of themes. Let me open up the deep in uh, file manager so you can see the changes. We're using the default theme at the moment, but we can change to the dark theme or the papyrus theme. To be honest, I quite like the, the default theme. You also get the option to choose your cursor theme in there, which is great. And then all your network options, your sound, your microphone. I've turned them all off so that they don't distort anything. And the time zone. The file manager itself is, I believe, deep in zone. And uh, it seems to work fine. Um, has it got anything in it? That's strange. It has indeed got things in it. So let's just open one of these. Oh, these are the wallpapers. Do you know, I quite like the fact that the wallpapers are in the pictures uh, directory. Or in fact, I can see they're actually a shortcut. But that, that's fine, not a problem. What about music? Ben sounds sunny. What does that sound like? Oh, well, we've got sound disabled, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. So it's just a standard file manager. Not much to say. So it's a little bit different. We can make it how we want. The right-click menu allows us to do a number, number of things. Uh, create a new folder or a new document. To sort by various criteria. To change the icon size. So if I change it to tiny, 
you can see that immediately takes effect on the desktop if i turn it to super large so does that i think i had it set as small which is probably what i would go with um what else have we got on the right click menu auto merge now if you watch those icons in the top left if i merge them they all go into one folder which i can expand and contract to keep my desktop clean i quite like that we can auto arrange we can also right click and open a terminal here i'm presuming that works from wherever we are let's go to uh, my home and let's go to downloads and let's uh, open in terminal i wish that was installed by, uh, by default that sort of right click action uh, really useful display settings well we pretty much know where we are that just takes us to uh, the control dock and something called corner settings now this in theory we can go to any corner and we can set what we want uh, each corner to do if we sweep our mouse across it i have not been able to get this working i'm assuming it perhaps is something to do with a virtual machine but the corner setting isn't working for me okay um it's hard to criticize something that you're using in a virtual machine because I have very, very limited graphics memory here, but okay. I have to say that's the only gripe I've got so far. These corner settings, which I may well find relatively useful. Again, it's sort of GNOME-esque, but it's not the GNOME desktop. Um, so that's that's Deepin. A quick look at Deepin. It's... It's it's hard to deny. It's a very very nice looking desktop. I like the fact that you can set the menu according to your preference. If you like the Teletubbies option, go for that. But if you prefer something a little bit more compressed, go for that. Oops. Hopefully that's compressed it. No, it hasn't. There we go. If you're not that keen on uh, the long panel on the bottom, you can change the mode to fashion mode. You have to excuse this uh, this little virtual box control panel that keeps coming up. Um, I would normally go for the uh, panel, to be honest, but I quite like the efficient mode here. If you right-click that, you can keep it hidden or move to a smart mode where it will no doubt auto hide you can set its status do you want it to be small or large where do we want it can we put it top left or right well let's try the top that works what about to the right that works as well um so the bottom line is it's quite configurable i um i find myself liking it it reminds me a little bit more of budgie the thing that i wasn't sure about with budgie is on the raven menu it didn't seem to do a whole amount and i i, I thought it was wasted desk space but with this <coughs> excuse me again with this you actually have all your settings there and as long as it stays out the way, it's fairly unobtrusive. So that's a brief look at uh, Deepin. Let's have a quick chat about it. So that's uh, Deepin. Um, what are my overall impressions? Well, um, it's a really pretty uh, uh, distribution. 
to my mind, it's one of the nicest looking distributions that I've seen. And it appears very usable and very configurable. I don't know what I think of that menu that comes up for the control panel, but certainly it makes life easy and it seems to stay out of your way. Um, it's based on Debian Stable, which to my mind is a great thing, and uh, it's very simple with clean lines. Would I use it? I suppose that's always the, the big question. I don't think I'd install Deepin, the distro, but I may certainly install it on my uh, Arch installation and uh, play around with it on there. But if you want a very simple installation um, for someone brand new to Linux, I think they would be able to adapt to it really well. There are questionable choices as far as uh, the default applications are concerned, the main one being WPS Office. But you can always swap that out for uh, LibreOffice if that's what you want to do. So, um, thumbs up really for Deepin. Nice distro. I can see why it's doing well. And I hope it goes from strength to strength. And I hope it stays with Debian Stable. That's it guys. Uh, I'm starting to flag a little bit now. Um, so I'm going to call it a day. And I will see you next week. And uh, thanks for watching once again.